AI and machine learning, that's the topic for this week. And we're very lucky to have with us Karen Bettencourt coming right up. So Karen, thanks for joining us this week. Uh, so what's the topic is AI and machine learning. We were talking the other day and uh, you've got an amazing background. Tell us some of the companies that you've worked with. Thanks. I've, I've worked at Amazon, Walmart, Cardinal Health, um, and I'm currently CEO of Vanguard Medical Logistics. Wow. That's some pretty good credentials there. So what's your interest in AI and machine learning? I mean, we there's a lot of hype around and I I don't see a lot of it being used. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm always fascinated by hype, for sure. But machine learning is something that we've had in place for 20, 30 years already. And in many cases, machine learning has just been rebranded to AI. Um, but passionate about supply chain needs data. Supply chain, frankly, doesn't always have its data. And yet we've got this, this group of people who are focused on AI is going to make supply chain easy. And my big question is, where are you getting that data from? Because I would love to have it right now. That's yes. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had a dabble with it and my team have had a mm -hmm. dabble with it. Um, I, I liken it a little bit, and I, I don't want to sort of sound like I'm, I'm down on AI here. I liken it a little mm -hmm. bit to sort of using a GPS system. You know, you need to have a pretty good idea of where you're going just in case yes. the GPS takes you off track. Uh, is that your view with AI? I mean, it's oh, rubbish oh, in, absolutely. rubbish out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is rubbish in and rubbish out. I think my big portion of concern and opportunity within AI is People, your GPS example is a great one. There are countless stories of people following the GPS blindly and either ending up in the lake or yeah. at a, you know, uh, in Washington state in the US, uh, people are constantly using uh, back roads and then they are stuck and the forest rangers have to go retrieve them. Mm -hmm. But it's where we have a problem or an opportunity that needs intuitiveness and needs subject matter knowledge to gauge whether or not the output is right. So I've mm. already mentioned a little bit, data doesn't always exist. Mm. AI trained on imperfect data is going to give you authoritative sounding results, but it actually doesn't know what it doesn't know. It's, it's very much like that old joke about how a freshman doesn't know that they know not. That is AI at this point. And people are trusting it because it comes across very authoritatively. It comes across very with a strong voice and it'll give you numbers. And human tendency to A, be a little bit lazy, but also uh, pass up the opportunity to think at many uh, many times any given space is, is where we are, where I worry about AI. Because the hype, to your point, we are not at... Uh, general intelligence or super intelligence. We're already talking about that, but how about let's just actually get intelligence, which means that you have to think and question and know the why. And right now AI is generally, because it's mostly machine learning, is a regurgitation device. Okay, so I, I, I didn't sort of think we, we might be going down the, the, the <laughs> negative track here. <laughs> What, what, what are yes. some of the uh, what are some of the good things do you think about AI? Are you seeing people use it really effectively? Yes, I have seen. And one of the greatest uses of AI currently is in a rapid need to get very intense regulations or where there's a, a massive bountiful space of, of information about, for example, a really large shipper who mm -hmm. ships 10,000 shipments a day mm -hmm. and needs to know how many of them are going to a simple uh, city. Right now, in most companies, that has to go to the special group that knows data. There has to be a report. But yet, there's actually chat bots that customer service can look at it and go, hey, we've had 10 sh shipments shipped to you. Mm -hmm. Or uh, for dangerous goods, there are some very, very innovative teams and, and companies that are offering solutions where you don't have to have an in-house expert for all of the regulations. It can actually tell you, oh, this is perfume in this quantity. It is uh, regulated by these three different rules. And that's a great use of AI. Yeah. I, I have to say, we we haven't used it much in our own business, uh -huh. but we've had a dabble with it to kind of see see mm -hmm. what it can do. Um, yeah. I, I put some synthetic sort of demand data sets through AI and, uh -huh. and, and literally just said, you know, tell me some of the characteristics of this data set. 
you know, and, mm-hmm. and it was demand going to different states in the US or something. Um, yeah. And it came back with some fascinating insights, some correlations that I would never have thought of. You know, and and that is that is where it is fantastic mm. because you're a knowledgeable person. You're mm. asking it a question. It's coming back, and it has perhaps insights mm. that make you realize, "Wow, I've never thought of that mm. before." Let me think about that. Mm. Um, that is a space where it is a great, helpful technology if you mm. already know what's going on and you know kind of what to what to expect or what to challenge mm. or or engage with it on. Mm. Okay. Yeah. What, what what do you see as the uh, the next opportunity really with, with AI? Yeah. Oh, there. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think customer service is absolutely a place where it needs to be rapidly um, replaced. Coding is also one yeah. where I know that um, I've talked to multiple Silicon Valley startups in the last month or so. They're already at fifty to seventy percent of their code is AI generated. That is huge because we have continually had a shortage of that number of skills. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so those are spaces where it's fantastic and in pricing. So mm-hmm. if you're someone who's trying to do bids in different formats and all of those kind of things working out, pricing where it can look at it and go, hey, here's a similar customer. This mm-hmm. is what it should do. Those are the spaces where it really amps up the individual output of one person to mm-hmm. 10, 20 times. Yeah. I mean, for those interested in AI and, and sort of watching the development of it, who, who do you think are the big call out companies to watch? Who do you think are using it well? Oh, that is an excellent question. Um, what Amazon I will say would is, have to be right up there. Oh, a- Amazon's absolutely. Although they played around a little bit. Their Alexa tool where they're trying to interface mm. and make it conversational, they've had some troubles with that. Mm. Walmart is actually doing incredibly mm. well with it. Yeah. Um, Microsoft, in terms of leveraging open AI's models to be able to uh, affect it, is, um, is is also doing some interesting space. And then small uh, 3PLs, mm. there are several in the United States that are already using agentic AI to solve some of these dangerous good examples. Wow, that's yeah. great. Okay, well, some interesting insights there. And um, we'll have to talk again about uh, some of this amazing background you've got. And- You can share some more tips with us. Thank you very much for joining us, Karen. Oh, thank you for having me.